Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure the whole House will join me, my friend, the member for Knowsley, and Jane Kennedy, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Merseyside, in paying tribute to the police constable who was stabbed several times yesterday in the line of duty while trying to arrest a rape suspect in Heighton. Can we all wish him well and a speedy recovery? I also wish the former Prime Minister well on his departure from this House and well in his future life, and I hope that the by-election in Whitney will concentrate on the issues of education and his views on selection in education. Because I want to congratulate the Prime Minister. She has brought about unity of Ofsted and the teaching unions. She's united former education secretaries on both sides of the House. She's truly brought about a new era of unity in education thinking. I wonder if it's possible for her this morning within the um, quiet confines of this House to name any educational experts that back her proposals on new grammar schools and more selection. Thank you. Mr Speaker, first of all, may I join the right honourable gentleman in paying tribute to the police constable uh, who was stabbed in Knowsley. Uh, one of the events that I used to look forward to going to every year as Home Secretary was the Police Bravery Awards, because at that event we saw police officers who never know when they start their, uh, their shift what is going to happen to them. They run towards danger when other people would run away from it, and we owe them a great tribute and our gratitude for that. Now, I'm glad that the Right Honourable Gentleman has raised the issue of education because it enables me to point out that over the last six years uh, we have seen 1.4 million more children in good or outstanding schools. That's, that's because of the changes that this government introduced. It's because of the free schools, the academies, head teachers being put in charge of schools, more choice for parents. Changes which I note, all of which the Right Honourable Gentleman opposes. So, what I want to see is more good school places, a diversity of provision of education in this country, so that we really see opportunity for all and young people going as far as their talents will take them. Mr Speaker, I asked the Prime Minister if she could name any experts that could help her in this policy, and uh, sadly she wasn't able to. So can I quote one expert at her? His name is John, and he's a teacher. And uh, he wrote to me and said, the education system and teachers have made great strides forward to improve quality and delivery of the curriculum. And he says, why not fund all schools properly and let us do the job? The evidence, Mr Speaker, of the effects of selection is this. In Kent, which has a grammar school system, 27% of the pupils on free school meals get five good GCSEs, compared with 45% in London. We're all for spreading good practice, but why does the Prime Minister want to expand a system that can only let children down? Can I say to the Right Honourable Gentleman that he needs to uh, stop casting his mind back to the 1950s? <laughs> what, uh, what, we will be, what we will be doing, what we will be doing is ensuring that we are able to provide good school places for the one and a quarter million children who are in schools that are failing, inadequate or need improvement. Those children and the parents of those children know they are not getting the education that is right for them and the opportunities that they need. And when, it look, when we look at the impact of grammar schools, if you look at attainment on, uh, for disadvantaged and non-disadvantaged children, the attainment gap in grammar schools is virtually zero, which it isn't in other schools. It's opportunity for young people to go where their talents will take them. And I know that the Right Honourable Gentleman, I know the Right Honourable Gentleman believes in equality. The Right Honourable Gentleman believes in equality of outcome. I believe in equality of opportunity. Yeah. He, he believes in levelling down. We believe in levelling up. Mr Speaker, equality, Mr. Speaker, equality of opportunity is not segregating children at the age of 11. 
So let me quote the Institute of Fiscal Studies, which says those in selected areas who don't pass the 11 plus do worse than they would have done in a comprehensive system. The Secretary of State for Education suggested on Monday that new grammar schools may be required to set up feeder primary schools in poorer areas. Will the children in these feeder primaries get automatic places in the grammar school or will they be subject to selection? <laughs> what, <coughs> what we are doing is setting up a more diverse education system that provides more opportunities. And what the right honourable gentleman appears to be defending is the situation we have at the moment where there is selection in our school system, but it's selection by house price. I think we want to ensure that children have the ability to go where their talents take them. And can I just remind, gently remind the right honourable gentleman, he went to a grammar school, I went to a grammar school, it's what got us where we are today, but my, my side my side might be rather happier about that than his. Mr Speaker, the two things the Prime Minister and I have in common is we can both remember the 1950s and we can both remember going to a grammar school. My point is simply this. Every child, every child should have the best possible education they can have. We don't need and never should divide children at the age of 11, a life-changing division where the majority end up losing out.